Hello and welcome to Fractal Model 24.6. We are really excited about this update. I'm going to give it to you in two parts. First part, I will show you the upgrades. And in the second part, I'm going to give a full demo. A lot has changed in the last year, and we are really excited to show you how much better the Fractal Model is. First, let's talk about the updates. We have three main updates. The first is by far the most exciting. Fractal is now providing forecasts. We're going to start with ERCOT and expand our footprint. Now you can be in the Fractal model and use Fractal's forecast to show how well the project performs. The second is that we've included models so that you can assess the New York Index Storage Credit. This is a new program and the Fractal model will be able to adapt as inputs change for the program. The last update is that we have new pricing for both OPEX and CAPEX for storage projects. Let's get started. The first update is that Fractal is now providing forecasts for energy storage projects. These forecasts are going to start with ERCOT and then we will probably expand the KISO and then other markets. As some of you have seen in the past, you can still upload any other forecast and it's as simple as going to this page, pasting in the forecast prices and then of course the Fractal Optimizer will co-optimize between the physics, financials and the revenue potential of your forecast. To access Fractal's forecast, go into the add-in. So that's typically on your home tab. And you'll click on the add-in on the far right. Click the advanced button. Go ahead and stay within this model and then click optimize. And then here you'll see the different options that you can use. If you want to use a different forecast, simply select custom that will use what is pasted in this market prices tab. And then if you wanted to use Fractal, well, select Fractal, select the market. For now, we'll have just ERCOT, we'll expand later. And then select the hub that you're interested in. After you select the hub, the nice thing is we have variations on the hub pricing. So that means that you could use hub as a base and then depending on whether you're closer to a wind node or a solar node, you could vary it to more reflect your project. Let's go ahead and select the solar node, and we will run it. A few seconds in, you'll see that the prices have been fetched. And after a few minutes, the fractal model has finished the optimization. Remember, we are co-optimizing between the physics, the financials, and the revenue meaning that we're accounting for things like round trip efficiency, we're accounting for things like degradation, cost of ox load, and then we're mixing that and finding the best dispatch schedule given the revenue potential. So if we go back to the home screen, we can see what the dispatch looks like. We can see how the revenue changes over the course of the life. And the biggest change is that there's less and less ancillaries that you can take advantage of. And also keep in mind, you can choose whether to have a perfect strategy or to trade it with other types of strategies that are either less perfect or more real world, maybe like how a trader would perform. What's important to note is that Fractal's forecasts are in our server, so you can use the Fractal forecast and you don't have to pay extra for them. So they remain separate from anything that's in the Fractal model that may be yours or just loaded as an example. The nice thing is if you would like to purchase Fractal's forecast, you can do so separately and then you own those. They're in your possession. The nice thing is you can use Fractal's forecast as long as you're a subscriber to the model. And then maybe later for financing purposes, you'll take possession of them. Now let's talk about the second update for the New York models. For the New York models, the most important thing is what's in this new New York ISC math tab. In this tab, you can input the different parameters that this program will have. Whoever is modeling this program will need to add their perspective of where they think capacity prices will clear and then their strategy for the strike prices. After that's done, Fractal can then co-optimize with the market prices that are put in for the other services, namely energy and maybe some ancillaries. Afterward, you could go back through the tabs 
you can change up project sizing, you can change up different inputs like augmentation, different chemistries, uh, but now you can co-optimize with the New York program. The last update is that we have new pricing for CapEx and also updates for OpEx. If you go into the project cost tab, the fractal price calculator here has been updated. This is using all of the newest data that we've gathered by helping people run procurements. This is combined with the OPEX estimates that we have in the cost schedule tab. Those are the updates for Fractal Model 24.6. We are really excited about the price forecast. This will enable you, whether you are a developer or whether you are a financier, to have Fractal's view of where prices are gonna be. Plus, you can have unlimited sensitivity on what if something changes, what if the sizing's different, what if the market's different. All that can be controlled by using the Fractal model. No more black box models. If you have any questions about the updates, please reach out. We are happy to answer any questions. And if you would like to stick around to view the full walkthrough, I'll do that next. Otherwise, thank you so much. Reach out to us if you'd like a demo and have a great day. Thank you for sticking around. Now we'll go through a full walkthrough of the fractal model. We'll do some scenarios, we'll do some sensitivities, and we'll talk about how we can leverage all the powerful features that the fractal model has. First, let's go over the main tabs. So in this tab, the dashboard, this is where you put in project features, things like sizing, things like the market, but also it shows you an overview of the financial performance, and you can put your inputs for how you want to model, whether you want to see the perfect performance or if you want to see something a little bit more realistic. The next tab is where you put in your CapEx and you can put in milestone payments for CapEx. This means that you can account for your different payment milestones for equipment and to your EPC. Next, you can do your OPEX and here we have recommendations, but it's very easy for you to put in your own escalators and maybe any step changes whether that's increases in warranty costs, performance guarantees, or insurance. The next is the battery tab, where you can account for things like oversizing, different types of chemistry and how they degrade. And then if you're really advanced, you can either customize the degradation curve or you can hard code it given the curve from the vendor. Next in the POI tab, and this is relevant if you have a restrictive POI, and especially if you're doing solar plus storage, wind plus storage, here you can input that behavior. This tab is very important. The applications tab allows you to model how much throughput particular services have and requirements from the ISO on how much duration you need to qualify for the service. The cool thing about the fractal model, if a service requires a two hour duration, but your battery only has 50% SOC, the model will adjust and just bid 50% of your capacity into that service. So we account for partial SOCs so that you can make some money in that service. This tab is an especially important tab. In the schedule tab, you can tell the fractal model your view on whether you think particular services will be diluted in the future. If in ERCOT you feel that starting year two, that a service like RRS will dilute, then you could do a curve, maybe something like this. And then you could say, well, for, for the rest of the model life, I want it to bottom out at maybe 40% awards. Another cool feature is you can tell the model whether you'd like to have a different type of cycle count strategy. You can input into the model that you'd like to use some of the cycles maybe from March and April, and then give them to August since in ERCOT, this is a very powerful strategy. We covered this in the intro video, but the market prices tab is where you can put in your price forecast. And then remember you have access to fractals forecast. If you go to the advanced tab, go ahead and click on optimize, keep it on fractal, keep it on ERCOT, select the market you would like, and then the variation of whether you like just the hub pricing or whether you like a variation where it's wind or solar centric. 
The revenue tab is really interesting for the financial people out there. Here you can see how individual services have contributed to the cash flow. And we also compare that with the TB2, TB4 on both day ahead and real time basis so that you can see how everything compares with each other. And then at the very end, we show you what the equivalent dollars per kilowatt month is so you get an idea of how well it performs per month per year. And as usual with the fractal model, the cash flow tab shows you how the capex, opex, and revenue mix together to give you your rate of return. As a reminder, it's a monthly model, so it gives you a lot of resolution. One of the cool things about the fractal model is that you can print two types of reports and they automatically get filled out. The first report is what we call the full report. This has both financial and physical aspects to it. As we scroll through it, you can see that different types of charts are filled out, different type of metrics are given. So it's a really informative way to show your team how a project is performing. And then the next tab just focuses on the revenue side. It gives you parts of the full report that are relevant to your financial performance. The last two tabs allow you to go into the data and take a look at how particular days have performed or how months have performed. So you can go in and you can select different days of this month. You could do different years. And it gives you the performance on that day to day basis versus what it looks like on a per month basis. And, and this tab gives you all of the hourly performance for this particular month. All right, that is an overview of the different tabs. Now let's jump in, let's do a few scenarios, let's do a few sensitivities and see the power of the fractal model. For our first sensitivity, let's just change up the forecast. Let's use the existing prices that are loaded into the fractal model and let's run it to see what the rate of return is with this setup. So we go into the advanced tab, we click the optimize button, we select the custom, which means that it's the prices here in the market prices tab, and then we optimize based on this. All right, and after a few minutes, depending on the power of your PC, we are finished with the analysis. We can go to the dashboard tab. And in this case, if you're paying attention, the previous forecast created a 15.98 IRR. This forecast creates a 13.08 IRR. This forecast, like the last, does reduce the amount of ancillaries as the project continues to age and energy arbitrage becomes more and more important. Let's do a variation where we don't have oversizing on the project. So we come into the battery tab, we go zero on the beginning of life oversize, and then let's run the model one more time. We'll click custom and then we'll start the optimization. All right, and after a couple minutes, we are done. Let's take a look at the results. And in this case, what's interesting is with this price forecast and with the cost of CapEx and OpEx, it does not like doing a beginning of life oversize. The rate of return goes from 13.08 to 14.66. Let's see what happens if we run a strategy that isn't perfect, what we might call persistence. So this just means that it's a trend where we take a look at what's happened in the last few days and bid that going forward. So it's more of what a trader would do. But before you hit the optimize button, remember to hit the set strategy button. This changes the parameters in the back end of the fractal model so that it runs persistence correctly. So let's do the analysis. And after a couple minutes, we are finished with the analysis. Now, this is a very different result. The rate of return went from 14.66 to 8.9. This shows that the perfect strategy was just very lucrative uh, and that a more achievable, I would say real world strategy will probably give you a lot less return. 
What this tells you about the pricing is that the forecast has a lot of variability built in. And if you have a godlike strategy, if, if you have clairvoyant knowledge of the market, well, the revenue could be really good. But in ERCOT, it's actually very difficult to achieve perfect. Most of the predictive analytic firms that are doing optimization, they're achieving between 75 and 85% of perfect. So you can see the result on the rate of return. Let's do another variation where the ancillary services, not just RRS, as we have highlighted here, uh, but the other ancillary services also dilute. So let's just copy the dilution in RRS to the other services. And let's run this model. And we're done. Let's take a look at the results. So rate of return goes down just a little bit from 8.9 to 8.82. Essentially, the pricing was already accounting for dilution in the pricing of ancillaries. Uh, so it didn't have as much of an effect as you would think. Now let's see what happens if you're not allowed to borrow from months and give to others. So let's make all the cycle count one cycle per day max. So we're gonna take off the fact that we were borrowing cycles from March and April and giving them to August. Let's just make them all straight. And let's run it. All right, and after a couple minutes, we are finished. Let's take a look at the results. And I would say that the results are somewhat counterintuitive, but the price forecast must have some value in those two months, March and April, where it's not worth taking away cycles uh, and giving them to August, uh, but a different data set could give you different results. One other variation we could try is to alter CapEx and see how that affects the rate of return. And recall, if you're just changing CapEx, then the financials should hold as far as the revenue optimization and you're really looking at sensitivities of how different vendors and their pricing could affect your capex if we change our cost of batteries from 180 per kilowatt hour to 200 then our rate of return goes from 9.37 to 8.26 so pretty big hit over a percent and this is why it's so important and especially as batteries are becoming commoditized to get the best pricing, reduce cost, and if possible, if you're building substantially sized projects, this is even more reason why you shouldn't use an integrator because they steal your rate of return. All right, well, that is a run through of the fractal model. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions or if you would like a demo, please reach out to us. You can reach out to info at Fractal EMS or Daniel or Rahul, and we'd be happy to set up a demo. Thank you so much and have a great day.